Hello everyone, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains. That's in Missouri, in the USA. Today, we're gonna to take a look at making a new battery pack for an old vintage computer using some new tabbed nickel metal hydride cells. Buying these tab cells makes the process a lot easier and you don't need a fancy spot welder. Let's jump right in. Here are just a few of the circuit boards I've had made recently by PCBWay who is nice enough to sponsor this video. So whether you need a few boards or a lot of boards, check out PCBWay. So head on over to PCBWay and get your instant quote on standard circuit boards, flex circuit boards, assembly, and they now also offer rapid prototyping so you can get your mechanical parts made as well. That's an awesome service. So for your next project, head on over to PCBWay. Here we have the major supplies and tools that we're going to need all set out. We've got the original battery pack, so we have a reference. We've got our new cells, a hot pink glue gun, it must be hot pink, soldering iron, some solder, some flux, heat shrink to encapsulate the package like this, and some cap tan tape is always handy. Now, before we start soldering things together, let's look at where this battery pack is going to fit in the original computer so we can do some planning. So here is where our battery pack lives in the computer, and it has this little metal cover, which sits over the top like so, and screws onto here. And this is a really tight fit, so it doesn't bang around a lot. And especially on the sides, it's a really tight fit. So we can't have our tabs sticking out the sides here because it won't fit. And we do have a little room on the top and bottom. There's kind of a spongy pad here, which gives us a little clearance. So we're going to have to keep that in mind when we lay out our new pack. Here I have the original pack set out beside the replacement cells. And remember, we can't have anything sticking out on the edges here, so our tabs that are connecting the cells will need to be more toward the inside, but they can't be up against that metal plate. We don't want to cause a short circuit. So if we solder our cells together in this orientation and then run one set of tabs down and the other up, they will both clear like so. And it just creates a little more of a challenge for this join here across the bottom, but we can handle that. So our first step is going to be connecting these two sets of cells in series like this, and then we'll join the two sets together. Let's get started. I'm using some blue painter's tape here to hold the cells in place. This just makes it a little easier. And I've cut the heat shrink off one of the positive ends and negative ends, and I flattened out the tabs. I'm going to go ahead and apply a little flux to each tab. And then we're going to tin these up. You want a nice wide soldering iron tip so you can transfer as much heat as possible. And you're going to need, you know, a 70 watt or better iron to do this. The trick is to get as much heat into it as quickly as possible. If you have to stay on the tab too long, you're going to heat the battery up too much. There we go. I've got a nice little bit of solder on our cell now. And I've got the tabs slightly pointing toward each other like this. So I can kind of push them together. Stick it down with the tape. And then there's still a little play to squeeze them together like that. I'm going to put a little more solder on my iron to aid in the heat transfer. I'm going to get as much of it as I can on the tab right here. And now what we're doing is heating up 
the solder that we put on the inside of those. And we want to make sure we get our tabs lined up. And hold it while it cools down. Yeah, now we've got a nice joint up in this area. It's just what we want. We want to go ahead and put some heat shrink tape on there too. Okay, I've got a piece of heat shrink tubing. I'm going to slip down to the surface of the cells. And we'll heat that up. And we'll take some pliers and squeeze this end really good while it's hot. Well, I cut it a couple of millimeters from the end of the tab. Now we can pull our tape up. And this one, I am going to bend this tab now up toward the positive end or to, toward the negative end here. The next one we'll do toward the positive end. And then we'll do the same thing with our second set of cells like this. Now we have both pairs of batteries soldered in the middle here. And I've got both of the tabs bent over toward the positive end, but that makes them opposite this way. And I've got my hot pink glue gun heated up. Remember, you must use a hot pink glue gun for this. Nothing else will work. What I'm going to do is just squirt a little glue in between the cells like that. Give it plenty of time. Okay. Just a little more like that. Kind of want to hold them secure for the next part here. A little bit here. A little bit there. There we go. Okay. And we'll get all four of them lined up like this. A little bit there. We're just kind of using the hot glue as a fixture. We'll put shrink wrap over this, we'll, which will hold everything together nice and secure. Hot glue just helps a lot when we're working on it. And since I've got the tab sticking down there, I'm just going to hold this here and I'll just do a couple more little squirts. There we go. Now that pack will kind of hold itself together so we can get the rest of the soldering done. Well, I've got this kind of upside down from its position uh, as in the original pack. We want our positive on this side, but our ends were sticking up here so it was easier to do this way. Let me get rid of this hot pink glue gun now because we're done with it. Now to get the angle we needed these to be at, uh, I had to kind of tilt the cells in, which made our bottom tabs not line up really well. On other types of packs like this one, which is for a Sharp CE 150, you can put the joining tabs between the two cells in series on the outside like this. As long as there's room for it, that works out fine. And on these, I just built, bent the tabs back over and soldered them together on the bottom. On this, we'll have to get a little more creative. Okay, what I had to do on these tabs on the bottom was kind of fold them back over themselves. Normally you don't have to go through all of this hassle. They will either lap directly over like this, or if they're sticking out this way, you can just fold them 180 degrees and everything will be fine. But because we needed this angle up here, because we didn't have any room on the sides, we have to get a little fancy. So what I will do is apply the heat from this side. I've applied a little solder to that soldering iron. And I'll slip my solder in between here. 
between the tabs that is. It's hard to get things hot enough to solder directly to the cell, so I'm just trying to solder tab to tab. Yeah, it's getting hot enough up at this top part here. I can sneak some more solder up on that side. I'm just using the little pliers here to apply just a little bit of pressure. There we go. Got that nicely joined. Give this a few seconds to cool down and then we'll worry about getting our wires soldered to our tabs on the top. Okay, I cut the tabs back where the wires will hook to. I'll apply a little flux now. Tin these up. And I retrieved the leads from the old battery. Go ahead and tin these up too. This is our positive side. Yeah, I think this will be easier. And as a bonus, we can both see what's going on. Get a little more solder on my iron here. Okay, I need to touch that up again because I moved it just a little bit as it was cooling. I'll get this negative lead connected here and then I'll find a better way of holding this pack. so the wires don't move. Okay. I'm happy with both of those now. So now I will bend these guys flat like this. And I'm going to take a few pieces of Captan tape For over the ends like this and I'll help protect it on the factory made packs they sometimes use a thick piece of tape like this which I peeled off the other one you can see it was applied when it was still hot we're just kind of doing the same thing here And we can apply that over the top of there, just like that. And we'll do the same thing on the bottom. So they make a special type of heat shrink for battery packs. It's thinner, it's a little slicker, uh, it has a very low shrink temperature and it shrinks up quite a bit, so you have to be kind of careful. Just cut off a piece that's about so long. I got this from a company called Uxcell, U-X-C-E-L-L, -L, uh, from Amazon. I will put the link in the description down below. I usually specify it by this distance here. So you have to measure across your pack and add in the depth. And get one that's a little bit bigger than that. There we go. Put the pack about in the middle there. I've got my little 
uh, heat gun here. It's an HG300D, about 25 bucks. This is great for heat shrink tubing. I'm going to put it on low and stay quite a bit away from this because you don't want to overheat it because you'll burn a hole in it. Okay, there we go. We've got one Epson HX20 battery pack. I'll just trim this excess off the end, make sure it fits in there, and then we'll let it charge up. Well, we've got our new pack installed in the HX20, and yes, it was a tight fit, even though we took care to make sure it wasn't too wide on the sides. It was a tight fit long ways. I had to pull out the little sponge pad that was at this end. I just stuck it here for safekeeping and then allowed our new pack to fit. Uh, even though cells are all a you know standard size, some are actually a little thicker than others and some are actually a little longer than others. A lot of times I've seen that the little uh, positive post here that sticks up from the top, sometimes that's slightly taller on some cells. And, You've probably even noticed this with like regular double A's that some brands will work in some devices a little easier than other brands. Sometimes some of them stick and they're hard to get in and out and sometimes they work fine. But we got this to work. I let it charge up for about an hour. Uh, these cells were almost all charged anyhow and everything is working fine. As you can see, we can make use of some tap cells to build new battery packs without requiring a fancy spot welder. So it's a little more DIY friendly. Now some of you may have been wondering how I could just cavalierly replace NICAD cells with nickel metal hydride because they do have slightly different charge characteristics. But here's the thing. Older equipment like this Epson here and most things built in the same time period really didn't have any charge control circuitry. Uh, you know, today we have chips that'll do all the charge control for a variety of battery chemistries. And back then that didn't exist. And some real charge control circuitry would be big and bulky and expensive. So what they did, for instance, on this Epson is they just use a diode for reverse polarity protection and a current limiting resistor. Epson actually suggested that you not charge the unit until the low battery light came on and then you charge it for eight hours only. If you charge it over eight hours, you'll likely damage the battery pack. And many other devices are exactly the same way. So in this case, since we're doing a trickle charge and we're doing a time limited trickle charge because there's no charge control circuitry, anything that would damage the NICAD pack is also gonna damage a nickel metal hydride pack. So we can safely go ahead and use the nickel metal hydride cells which are a little more friendly, a little easier to get these days, but you can get either already tabbed though. Thanks to everyone who helps support the Hey Bert channel through Patreon and other means. Your support is greatly appreciated and you help keep this channel going. If you would like to find out some more information about that, well, just look in the description down below. There's a couple links there. If you have any questions or comments, I would love to hear from you. Just leave them in the comment section down below. And until next time, bye. And then you only charge it for H.